kind of like South Park, you know, with those fat Harley riders. <laughs> guys cool today is my my Saturday which is actually Monday and the objective is to get the front wheel I want to get the front brake caliper on and start prepping for the back to get the swing arm and the rear wheel I just went through the tires and these uh, spokes and I kind of tweaked them tightened them just to make sure that we're pretty true and balanced so we should be good there otherwise I don't want to waste too much time I just want to get this wheel going maybe today we can have this thing standing as a roller so get going all right, cool. Gonna throw the front wheel on. I got the speedometer sensor already mounted up to this bolt. The rotor goes on the, we'll call it the passenger side, the left side, right side. All right, let me think of a smart way to do this. Always check your parts. I was missing the collar that goes on the other side because the wheel had missing space. So this has to go on the inside of the rim and it just creates that, uh, fills that gap. All right, it's on. All right, the front wheel's on. I just gotta torque it, throw the uh, lock nut on the outside, and uh, that should be good. It's too bad that I didn't finish this. I'll probably, what I'll end up doing is masking that off and I'll hit that with some Plasti Dip. All right guys, so I got the front wheel on finally. Fuck it, keep going. Brake caliper. Oh. Twenty five foot pounds. All right, just plasti dipping this uh, section here. I didn't powder coat just to kind of make it look nice. All right, I already made a mistake. I have the swing arm upside down, so I already fucked up. Gonna flip it around and do it the right way. All right guys, cool, so I have the swing arm mounted. I can now start assembling all the other components for the rear wheel. Before I go any further, I got grease fucking everywhere, so I'm gonna try and get everything as clean as I can because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to reach a lot of these places later. So I'm just gonna wipe everything down and get the grease off. All right guys, cool, so it's like midnight. Uh, I couldn't sleep, I took a break. I thought I was gonna be done for the night. But after going on YouTube and watching and reading a lot of forums and stuff on how to uh, seat the tires, uh, I figured I'd keep giving it a shot, try and get it done by tonight so tomorrow I can do some work. Fortunately, I got the rear to pop. I had to spray a lot of Windex around the inside for a lubricant, and I hit it with around 90 PSI, and I popped one side. Uh, I brought the air down, broke the bead on the opposite side, but maintained the bead that I, I fixed, and sprayed the other side, hit it with another 90 pounds. That side popped, I got both, um, so both sides seated in well. I brought the air pressure back down. I got it sitting at 35, and I'll top it off when the bike's all set. Try and get a full on roller going tonight. The sprocket goes on this side, and it's got these rubber damper kind of dealios. I mean, this thing can only really go in one way. I don't think I'm fucking this up, but there we go. Nice and tight. So that's just giving, I guess, that little bit of friction, that buffer. Uh, I have my brakes, uh, brand new shoes. All right, guys, cool. Here's just a real close look on how the how simple the rear brake shoes are and the rear brakes are on this. Uh, they just slide into the back housing like so. They pivot on this pin here, and then this little knob which you control with your foot pedal will open wide and close, and it basically just spreads just opens up the springs on the pads or the shoes and we'll get it up into place i've been using the lithium grease this will be really hard for me to show you both sides but trust me i'm just literally feeding the bolt through nothing fancy here right there Ugh. So one thing I'm gonna try and do is just try and get the alignment on the rear tire. Now since I'm using a new chain, I know I probably could take all the slack out and move it all the way forward, but still, you need to make sure that the wheel is going straight in a straight line. You can't be off one way or the other or else you're gonna cream off the side of the road. 
So I'm going to do my measurements, get that tightened, uh, throw the shocks on. Because once I get the shocks on, I can kind of see how the bike's going to sit. And then I can go for the handlebars, which I really want to see how this bike's kind of cruising. So we'll do the alignment, throw the shocks on, and try and get the bars on today as well. Nineteen seven eighths. So we're both the nineteen seven eighths. I'm gonna try and uh, tighten this down, and then I'll tighten down the back adjusters. I want to make sure all my slack is to the fr uh, front. That way, I have the most amount of movement to the back. All right, just torqued it down. I'm gonna check the measurements one last time. One important safety note: you need to make sure you replace your cotter pin, and this just slides to the center. Bend this around. All right, guys, cool. So I just tightened down the um, sprocket and chain tensioner points for the rear swing arm. I'm going to recheck my measurements one last time because that could have pulled it down a little bit. I just to make sure everything's still straight. But once that's done, we can throw the shocks on. Good. All right, guys, now that I had the back all buttoned up and everything, I can start working on my shocks. Now, I got these JBS shocks from a guy in Australia, but they're Japanese. I don't get that. These ones are adjustable. I don't love this, this silver here, and I gotta decide if I'm gonna spray paint these. But regardless, we can throw these on and see how they're gonna go. All right guys, so I fucked up a little bit. I powder coated on the swing arm where the shock mounts to. So I gotta grind this off. Cool, I'll do the other side, get that clean. That should slide on now with a little grease. So I'll throw the nuts on, tighten that down. All right guys, cool. Uh, before I drop the bike, I'm gonna get the side stand on. So I got all the components for that and that stays out of the way. So might as well work on that, right? Get something done. Once again, I powder coated inside this lip. So I need to grind that out just so the bolt slides through. All right guys, cool, so I got the side stand in. Uh, a little tight, but it'll wear in. And then now I can drop the bike down. I can check the ride height. I can start mounting the handlebars because I want them to have that, that right grip. Kind of like South Park, you know, with those fat Harley riders. All right, guys, I'm going to throw the handlebars on next. I'm not going to torque it down yet because I'm not sure on the ride position uh, until I sit on the bike and get everything going. So I'll just kind of rough set them in there, hand tighten it so it stays up on its own, and then we'll go from there and then uh, feel it out. So I got them centered right now, and I got them basically sitting straight up. So I'm going to sit on the bike, see if I can get some kind of a feel and go from there. If I'm actually right, I'm probably like this, and I got just an ever so slight of a bend. Is I could pro I could go straight, but that'll get a little tiring. And there. Yeah, I'm feeling right here. I'm gonna torque it down right here. I think everything's good. It's in nice and firm. Good riding position. All right, let's start throwing on the handlebar accessories. I'm actually gonna be re uh, replacing most of the cables. I have throttle cables, a clutch cable. But I'm going, to, I'm going to reuse my front brake hose as well as my front uh, speed sensor uh, wire. So I'm just going to go through everything, disassemble what I need to disassemble, and check out my new cables to make sure they're the right ones, which probably should have done weeks ago. All right, guys, cool. So I can actually start installing my brand new replacement levers. I got these. These were on eBay, I think, for like 30 or 40 bucks. They're pretty cool. They're anodized. They're gold. I think they'll match this bike really well. So I might as well throw these on. All 
Probably somewhere in there. This S tone's fucking up my gloves. When you're putting on your new handlebar grips, you need to make sure you're putting the right side on the right time. It's pretty easy not to fuck up, but um, you just need to make sure you know which one. Now, I'm just replacing with two style like motocross style ones. And if you notice, one has a larger diameter hole than the other. That The larger one goes on the throttle side. So if you see, this will slide in like so and slide down. Now, you can use glue, but almost everybody online and everywhere else says to use hairspray. Now, I don't have the cheap shit like everybody says to use. I have this Tresemme hairspray, so I'm gonna give it a shot and see if it works. Spray the shit out of it. Just slide it on. Now, that's as far as it's gonna go. It's hard to see, but there's a little gap there, and that's perfect. You don't want to take your end and pop it. You just want to get it all the way on, wipe off the hairspray. All right, that should be good. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. That's a good feeling grip. Amazon, like 12 bucks. <clears throat> you just want to make sure that you can twist the throttle, good amount. Cool, now I'm going to slide on the left grip with some hairspray. Clean this first. Well, it's on. All right, cool. So I'm gonna solder the electrical switches that go to the clutch and the front brake, just so nothing gets damaged or it can get pulled out or anything. I just, soldering is just much better. Just gonna reset my points here. All right, I think that'll do it. Uh, one thing I want to do before I get everything all buttoned up is just check continuity. You know, I don't want to put all this together and it doesn't work. Harbor Freight Free uh, Multimeter works great for these shit things. So what I'm doing is, is with the uh, multimeter, when you have the switch off, it'll give you the number one. And that means nothing is connected. So when you take your two ends and you connect the circuit, it jumps and it jumps around because it's giving like a phantom power. And any power that shows up or any number that shows up means there is a connection. So what you do is you take your terminal and you get one terminal and on that's on uh, one side and one on the other, and then you just apply the brake. Okay, the brake's out, it's on number one. Hit the brake, there it goes. It's making the contact. Off, on, off, on, cool. All right, guys. This is uh, this is all I'm gonna be able to get done tonight. It's almost one o'clock. Got some of the hand stuff done. I gotta run to Lowe's tomorrow. Get some replacement bolts. This is what we're looking like, man. Handlebars are in. Blah, 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 blah,